Everybody in the War Games main event knew that CM Punk was coming out at the end of the show. They told him before the match. They didn't tell anybody else. I got to find out who knew what when and and all of that. But uh, it was a it was a very well kept secret from everybody. CM Punk has spent his entire career enraging the people he works with, napalming every bridge in his path, but being such a star that his enemies break their backs to restore those bridges and welcome him back with open arms. A perfect pro wrestler, in other words. What is the over under on how long he stays this time? He's got to piss somebody off, like, already. Well, Well, you know, there were some definitely people that weren't (laughs) thrilled. But I actually heard uh, the morale was far lower in AEW, actually. Really? They they thought that him showing up there just made them look totally second rate. Mm. And this guy won. And, you know, part of the problem was if you watch Survivor Series and Collision... Whew. They were second rate. Holy smokes. On, on November 25th, 2023, AEW was second rate. That collision Let's show. Let's just be clear. What's the one thing all wrestling fans, but especially WWE fans, want from their wrestling? They want these tables. fucking tables. Goddamn tables. Asuka comes out. She goes into the ring, and she gets sticks, and they all boo. But she goes back into the ring, and they go, yay! And she gets more sticks. And they go, boo! And she goes back into the ring, and they go, Yay! And she finally pulls at the table, and they lose their goddamn minds. <laughs> Cody's coming out. The crowd's chanting for Dusty. It's quite awesome. They say his father created war games. Just like Cody created a brand new event in this city as that's, well. That's also true. I went, holy shit, this is a new WWE. It's a strange what time. The fuck? And Randy Orton comes out, and his time off has been spent entirely in the gym and eating protein. This guy was gigantic. And shredded. This guy looked like The Rock. The reason they signed CM Punk was they've decided this is what the fans want. And the funny thing is, I watch every single one of these shows, and there have been Punk teases for a long time, and uh, it never got that big of a reaction. But then, man, they hit this guy's music, and every last single person in this building lost their fucking minds. They went crazy for this guy somehow you can do exactly what you want and people will still fawn over you and want you to work for them it's it's actually incredible i made a 100 hundred dollar bet with eddie that cm punk was not going to be in Uh-oh. chicago and in fact eddie won the deal is i need to buy a cm punk shirt and wear it here on this show ah, i see wow. which i will do people are fascinated by uh my hoodie for some reason. I don't know why. I'm just wearing a hoodie. What's the big deal? Any change and people just get all weirded out. Anyway, what are we talking about? Granny, how you doing? I'm getting really hot. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I'm cold. These. You want to wear my sweatshirt? Yeah, get a hoodie. I had to turn off all my heaters. That was really hard to disrobe. Chris says Brian's wearing a Jeff Hardy shirt now. It's not. No. <laughs> It could be. <laughs> Actually, okay. uh, to be perfectly honest, it's my wife's shirt. I was going to go to Lake Tahoe. Nobody's supposed to go without chains. Guess what? You went anyway. I went anyway. The car hit ice, and it spun around, and the back end went into the ditch. I made it all the way through, but I was never so scared in my life. <laughs> Why did you risk that? I've always done crazy, stupid things, and I saw this sign... I don't know if it said detour or what it was, but I took it. And here I am going across this desert. I gave the guy behind us, it was a big truck, and he gave the guy the finger. He chased us for a long, long ways, and finally we find a turnoff and went behind some buildings where the big truck couldn't get. Wow. I told her where I stayed, and she laughed and laughed and laughed and said, that was a red light district. Ah. So that's why everybody was looking at me, because they mm. thought I was a red yeah. light person. Yeah, sure. I did get robbed once, though. How are you alive still? I don't know. They were never intending to do Ric Flair versus Hulk Hogan. The press conference, the Royal Rumble footage, Sid's promos about how bullshit this was. It was all an angle just to get to where Vince really wanted to go, which was two giant dudes... In the main event, there is a John Moxley post-match promo that I saw on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I've never once said this place is World Championship Wrestling, but God damn it, if they don't put this fucking promo on television, it's becoming World Championship Wrestling. 
This was a mix of some heavy real-life shit and also some fake professional wrestling storytelling. And it was a goddamn masterpiece. This guy's in fucking tears as he's doing this promo. John Moxley. So, like, I, I was watching this going, it's on fucking Twitter. What the fuck is this doing on Twitter? Flair says he did not make Sting. Sting made himself. Sting walked to the back after that 45 minutes. 25 wrestlers were going, Jesus, you're the man. They did not rehearse the match, he notes. Yeah. <laughs> that was weird. Hey, you know, Rick, can we do it one more time, but I'd mention rehearsing the fucking match or whatever? Nope. They put it on television. And, you know, clearly there was a bunch of blowback to this because Flair tweeted something today. And <laughs> I swear to God, I read it and I was like, did Granny write this for him? <laughs> it was like such a guilt trip. If you guys don't like me, I'll just walk away. I don't want to ruin it for everybody. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? The blowback was from the Rampage promo, not the uh, Dynamite promo. Okay. He asked for all women 18 to... I forget what... It started at 18, though. That was a real thing. Sure. He wanted some 18-year-olds. They didn't yeah. like that. Yeah. There's only one gear that Roosh wrestles in. And uh, Mark Briscoe decided he was going to wrestle in Roosh's gear. Not his actual gear, but, you know, full gear. Not the pay-per-view. They went at it. He had a Roosh match. Are you worried about your title defense next week? To which he replies, Was Fatty Arbuckle worried? <laughs> as a... Never thought I'd hear a Fatty Arbuckle <laughs> reference on a professional wrestling as, show, as, but as, here we are. Uh, and then she orders Arter to take her shoes off, and of course he does. These are fine and everything like that, but... Is everyone still enamored with this Tony Storm character? MGF promo. The usual very, very long MGF vocal segment. The lights go out. The Devil's Gimp Squad attacks... And then we get the following message on the screen. In the shadows, our game begins. Next week, MJF and Samoa Joe, will you face the unknown in a tag match? Are you a hero, Max? Chad GPT write this fucking thing? Then they said the devil had the ability to break into the audio and video system. Yeah. Mm. And I'm a skinny guy. And uh, uh, uh... I can break into the audio system. I could get Tony to break into the video system. Perhaps we are the devil. Yeah, stranger things have happened. Show begins with the family versus Garza and Carrillo, or as Booker calls him, Carrillo. <laughs> this next segment was awful. We see a half dozen random, faceless, nameless, anonymous females chatting. And when I say chatting, I mean they're always going. <laughs> then someone, who I don't know who it was, pie faces Perez, and a fight breaks out. I have no idea who this was. It was a blonde woman. Dead ass serious question. I don't what, know. Was this Tiffany? I don't think so. Anybody? I don't know. No one knows. Ilya Dragunov versus Nathan Fraser. My God. So we went five, about five and a half minutes or so. Maybe my favorite five and a half minutes of 2023. I watched all five and a half glorious minutes. I hit the rewind button. I watched the entire thing a second time. Hit the rewind button again. Watched it a third time and finally took some notes. This was so fucking great. Unbelievable wrestling on display here. Talk about a new audience. Her foot goes right down Ariana's top and it pulls the top down. Oh, that's what happened. And her boob comes completely, totally out. I see. And I waited. And I waited. And literally the only reaction to this was Booker T goes, whoa. And they all moved on. Can you imagine if this would happen in the 90s? Oh. oh my God, they would have hijacked the entire rest of this match. This crowd was like almost embarrassed that it happened. And they just like to try to pretend it didn't. Wesley versus Johnny Gargano versus Bronson We go Reed. from something horrible to something great to the, something horrible to something great the peaks, over and over again throughout this show. The peaks and valleys in the show are extreme. They are very extreme. But this was an extreme peak. This match was so awesome. It was cool-ass dudes doing cool-ass shit, and it was awesome.